Hi everyone, um, Richard here from Render Boxes. Now it's a bit late in the day today um, in the UK, and that rhymes, but I thought this was worth sharing. Um, so here we've got the new Zeus, all oh, about two kilos of it, um, WRX80 motherboard for the new AMD Thread Ripper Pro. And Fortunately, we also have some Threadripper Pros as well. Um, it it came as a bit of a shock, I'll be honest, to get all this stuff in today. Um, as we're all aware, supply chain is um, something to be desired at the moment across the planet. Um, so I wasn't expecting all of the AMD Threadripper Pro stuff to come sort of on time. So I'm really happy it has, um, and it's it's really, really interesting, um, and also kind of ties in well with um, our new machine, the Molecule version three, that that we really wanted to put this into it, but thought it wasn't going to happen till summer. So um, what we're going to do is just kind of maybe do a quick bit of fast forward. Um, get all this stuff into just literally just a quick demo rig. Um, we are going to water cool it. We're going to use um, the really beautiful heat killer um, TR4 block, which you know there's no reason that it shouldn't work absolutely perfectly. Um, we'll also use a water cool Mora three rad. Um, and we'll just kind of set this up in quite a crude way, but hey, let's set it up and let's see what it can do. Okay, so for the eagle-eyed amongst you, you'll know that this is the sub-chassis for um, the Atom. The Atom being our smallest model, kind of, I suppose, remote worker model that typically would be Ryzen 6 or Ryzen 9 based, up to 16 core still, but on those lower end chips, um, but will support dual GPU, including dual 3090s. Um, but we have got all of the layout on the board for EATX. Um, and we've got our bar at the bottom, which is like a kind of reinforced um, support bar, if you like, that can handle the 200 kilos of this uh, Asus WRX80 board. So let's um, let's put it all together and see what we can get from it. Okay, so here we are. Morning has broke. It got a little bit late last night, um, just kind of getting this ready. Um, had to do a clean install of Windows. Um, thought it'd just be best because it's kind of new chip architecture, isn't it? So, um, so systems up and running. <clears throat> the Mora 3 is all connected to our 3975WX, 32 core thread ripper pro. Again, all on the new Asus. Um, it's a really long, annoying name, but uh, WRX 80E Dash Sage SE Wi Fi, which, uh, as noted before, weighs an incredible amount, but it's quite an, it's, it's quite an incredible motherboard. Um, 13090 Asus blower installed. Um, another great thing about the Threadripper Pro, obviously the memory capacity is is much far more improved than um, than on the standard Threadripper range. So we've got 128 gig here of this is actually slower um, registered UDIMs, just because this is just what is here at the moment, and as we know, stock is crazy everywhere. Um, we've got the 3200 um, LDIMS 
on order. Um, could only find 32 gig modules of them though. Um, ideally it would be really nice to have the 64 gig modules so that we could get 512 directly into here without it being sort of too painful in the pocket. But we've got 128 gig of RAM here, but it is running slower. So any kind of benchmarking we do or whatnot, that's, that's going to be reflected um, probably slightly negatively from using slower RAM. Um, it's kind of 2933 or 3200 um, dims are what's, uh, what's kind of, you know, the ideal. So at the moment, um, have just come in this morning and in the UK it's not very warm at the moment. Um, so we've got a nice and chilly 16C in the room. The liquid temps are 23. So slightly higher delta um, than maybe what we'd normally see. The CPU, the Threadripper is running at 31.5 to sort of 41. As we all know, Threadrippers just fluctuate um, quite heavily um, and can be anything up to like 10 degrees up and down. So yeah, we're sitting somewhere between sort of 30, 30 to 40 at the moment. Um, GPU is nice and cool at 25C. Obviously this is all open, but we haven't got any other fans running. On the Mora 3, 420, we've got four 200 mil Noctuas, um, but they are dialed in with the D5 next to not actually even start until the coolant gets to about sort of 28C. So, effectively at the moment we're completely silent there is there is well the only fan that we've got is the blower fan on the 3090 from azu so um i think what will be really interesting first is i'm going to uh, and i will bring the camera over to this i'll just set this up first I'm gonna open task manager and we've got all of the cores here kind of showing um now the boost is slightly slower on the threadripper pro we get up to, I believe it's three point, sorry, 4.2. Um, so that's a max boost. So it'll be very interesting to see if we can just maintain that with it being on water. Um, I usually find that on single cores with the Fred Ripper, it's really quite easy to keep it at its maximum boost. But if you try and try to achieve that maximum core count, um boost with it on a hundred percent load is 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 a different kettle of fish um it's usually quite close but you can't just maintain 4.2 or you know i haven't really seen it on on high core count thread rippers so that's that open um let's get the old classic of cinebench r23 open and I'm just going to put that on. Let's just do one pass. Obviously, everything is really cool in here at the moment. So I would imagine that this one pass is going to be really nice. Um, so that's running now. 3.9, 3.85 gigahertz. And obviously, we haven't done any dialing in yet in the BIOS with the Threadripper Pro. Still need to kind of learn that. Uh, so 43,632 and I think kind of normally you would be looking up to about 44 and a half thousand. So we're kind of, we're kind of pretty much there. We didn't see that turbo going past about 3.9 there. So we've effectively got some tuning to do. Um, the temps, obviously that's just dropped down now. So what I'm going to do now. So I'm just going to put it on the 10 minute test duration so that we can just test the throttling. Um, I doubt there will be any. But let's have a look at these CPU temps. And also let's check the liquid temp. So we're on 24.5C. Room still at about 16C. So our CPU temps have jumped up to 57, 58C. We seem to be 
3.85 gigahertz. What I always find is when you start getting towards the end of the run in Cinebench, you'll then get a real jump back up to the turbo. So that's finished and 4.2 and then it's come back down to 3.9. Um, again, the temperatures, you know, and this is, you can't really get much more water cooling than this, like sheer radiator capacity than the Mora 4 420. And that spike there, uh, we're sitting around 59C. Now what I will also do is open hardware info 64 um just a really nice easy way we run the sensors only and we can just have those sensors running alongside and see what our kind of average and what our max is that the threadripper pro is kind of getting to so the maximum it's here is 64.8 averaging on sort of 60 to 61 so what's really interesting about this is obviously the power draw we've got a plug over here we're sitting on 375 so 375 watts with the thread ripper pro at 100 percent not breaking about sort of 60 61 obviously the 3090 is idling that's not doing anything um it's completely idle and the, the motherboard has, well, you've got two um, 12 volt in, and then you've got one, two, three PCIe um, expansion power cables as well connected. So I know we've only got one GPU in here at the moment, but it just goes to show you, I mean, this board can just can kind of suck up as much power as you give it, but we, it, it, it wouldn't seem that if I look down here, CPU package power in hardware info on the Threadripper Pro. I mean, it's it's at two seven nine dot four 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 six. It really is staying completely within the realms of the two hundred and eighty watt TDP. Um, I know TDP can be quite controversial, especially with Threadrippers, um, but it doesn't seem to break that at all. Um, it's 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 sitting there so it'd be very interesting to see what tweaking there is to doing the bios on this azus board um i did i had th th this partition that's on um this test bench has obviously got ryzen master and and all sorts of utilities in there and ryzen master won't open if you've got thread ripper pro it just says cpu unsupported I mean, that makes sense. It's obviously their workstation board and they probably don't want PBO or any of the other things going anywhere near um, the Threadripper Pro because obviously it's a workstation um, chip with ECC RAM and that's not really to be tinkered with. So, as I say, we're not, yeah, we're up a little bit higher, 62. But I'd say this is kind of probably where we're going to sit for the moment. It's going to take a little while for this room to heat up. The room hasn't changed at all. It's still 16. So it's um, it's quite nippy in here. But we'll leave this going maybe for an hour or so. And then maybe pick back up on that. Um, kind of just, just see just see what, what, what the chip's done. I've got a feeling that it's just going to be a very stable affair. And that's kind of what you're paying with, with the Threadripper Pro. And while... Um, Whilst the Threadripper standard is still, I don't think this is competition for it at all. You've kind of got the choice. Threadripper, we will still keep in our nano system, which is kind of like, you know, more of your personal workstation. And I would imagine that Threadripper Pro will just be used in the molecule um, in the large system because we've got all of this PCIe um, power. So first impressions, Everything seems great. Um, it's just really nice to have a platform like this finally for Threadripper because, you know, I think we all know that unless Intel pulls something out of its hat in this kind of, this void between the enterprise market um, and just kind of like almost like your personal workstation, if they can't 
pull anything out of their hat that gets somewhere near what Threadripper is able to do so easily, then um, Intel should be quite worried. So I'll stop talking. We'll give this about an hour and then we'll come back and see where it's all at. Okay, so I thought we'd bring the camera actually in. Um, so here is the uh, Threadripper Pro with the heat killer from Watercool Block. Um, everything is just completely silent. The, um, the only noise that comes on is the power supply fan just kind of comes on. It's in eco mode. Um, it's actually the new EVGA um, 1600 watt um, that's just been released and they've actually improved the fans that were on them um so they really are they really are almost completely silent but every now and then it just pops on and no doubt just cools down the capacitors slightly on the psu and then goes off over in hardware info here you can see um sort of 61 and a half you can see there's a maximum there of 72 as i said this is just the really weird fluctuation that you get with thread rippers um you know you can see the average is 58 so and when we turned on the system we was kind of in in the mid to late 30s so that's that's really what we're going to get i think i think we could kind of leave this going all day i mean it's gone up two degrees in the room but i have put the heating on now so and the heating's on 24 c because it's cold so I think what we can really glean out of this, just from this kind of initial setup, is that the Threadripper Pro is just going to be a really nice, solid, stable, almost more Xeon-like affair, which for, for our machines or for our flagship machine, the Molecule, that's kind of exactly what, what we want and what we need. Um, but having that, 3995 WX64 core with support for just so much more RAM and it's ECC and we've got 128 PCIe lanes really is going to be quite a game changer um, and it'd be quite interesting to see if it makes the system slightly cheaper um, because we're not reliant on dual Intel scalable and everything else that goes with that so I think we'll probably kind of leave that at that. Um, this is just like an initial overview, just showing the Threadripper Pro on water, showing what kind of results you're going to get. Obviously, there's loads more benchmarks and tests and all sorts that we could do, but, you know, you see enough of those on YouTube anyway. So I just thought that this was quite a nice way to kind of show some new tech and we're really excited to implement it into our systems. So on that note, I bid you farewell and thanks for watching.